everybody. Welcome to Tea Time. That's right. It's Monday night, 8 o'clock. It's December 14th, middle of the month. I hope everyone's getting their shopping done. I'm going to talk about my weekend real quick and get to my guest. Friday didn't do much. Just chilled, relaxed. Um, Saturday, I went out to Corum, went to go visit my girlfriend, Raquel, who just moved. And then Saturday night, I actually watched a really good Martin Scorsese film that I didn't see. I never saw it called The Departed. And it was from 2006. Never saw it. But Matt Damon was in it. Leonardo DiCaprio was in it. Mark Wahlberg was in it. Alec Baldwin. Great movie. I enjoyed it deeply. And then Sunday. Yesterday, not too much. Laundry day. And uh, it was 61 degrees here. So I decided to take a ride and enjoy the weather. Because we're expecting 6 to 12 inches of snow on Wednesday. That was my weekend. Now let me get to my guest. <laughs> Mike Marino is a stand-up comedian. He's an actor. Um... And he's in the house. Hello, Mike Marino. How are you? I wish I was in the house. I wish I was in your house, standing in front of that Christmas tree, smelling the great sauce you got on the stove. Yeah, that's right. How'd you know? I just know. I can tell by the way you were talking. I'm like, there's food in her house, and I should not be here. I should be there. There's always food. You're right. So listen, I want everyone to get to know who you are. Um, you and I met a couple of years ago with our mutual friend Giovanna, Kerry, Captain Splash at McGuire's. You were doing a show with another mutual friend. Peter Gordio was there with you that night, and I had a blast. Um, you know, you're a Jersey boy, right? You're originally from Jersey City? I was born in Jersey City. After about 10 years, my family took us out and moved to the suburbs. I'm actually in the house I grew up in, and I bought it from my mom and dad about 20 years ago. Oh, nice. And because of COVID, I've been here for the last six months before that I was living in Los Angeles. So I have a place on both coasts. Yeah. I was traveling the world, and now yeah. I'm here, and I probably gained about 15, 20 pounds. <laughs> I, I hear you. I totally hear you and feel you. That's all I've been doing is eating and shopping online. I figured if I'm going to die, I'm going to die fat and poor. Oh, my God. Fat and poor. That's what's going to happen. I actually look in the refrigerator while I'm eating. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. My mother used to do that when we were kids. My mother would have, we'd be eating lunch, and she'd say, what do you want for dinner? I'm like, I didn't even finish the sandwich. Well, make sure you're home early, because if you're late, you're not going to eat. What? <laughs> It's true. It's true. What do I miss the way things used to be? I know. I know. I do, too. I miss old school. So, listen, you, um, what did you do after high school? I want to know where did you go and what did you do? And what kind of kid were you in school? Were you funny? Yeah. I always wanted to be in the entertainment business since I'm about a baby. Yeah. My mother told me when, when I was uh, born, I was the second of three children. When I was born back in the day in Jersey City, they would use the babies to teach other moms how to diaper their children with the diaper that you didn't dispose of. You threw the diaper in the hamper and they washed it. Or they had like a cleaning company come and wash the diapers. Well, my mother said that I was the model they were using. So I was on stage as soon as I came out. Wow. And then when I was a little kid, I always watched TV commercials I'd walk back in the living room and then I'd imitate the commercial, <laughs> always imitating everything. So then I'd become a teenager, junior high, high school, plays, 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 drums, drums, drums. I always wanted to be an entertainer. So I really wasn't that good of a drummer, but I made it look like I was a phenomenon by doing crazy things in high school. So I was a cut up in high school. I was a popular kid but I wasn't very athletic or anything. I just wanted to be a show off. Yeah. I graduated high school. I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Yeah, and you, you, graduated, you graduated from the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. You also went to, um, you also studied, where else did you study? Cause you, you did study at a, quite, a, quite a few places, right? You at HB Studios, right? Herbert Berghoff Studios. I started when I was 16 at that school because the band teacher in my high school was like, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, I want to be an actor. And he goes, I know where to take you. And he took me there. So I was going to Sunday classes for about a year. I had Bill Hickey as a teacher. And at that time, I, Anthony Hopkins was teaching there too. I mean, this is a long time ago. And you get to see them, but you, they weren't big stars yet. 
yeah, that it teaches. And then uh, from there, then I went to the academy. But I didn't go to the academy until I graduated high school because that was going to be my college. Right. I didn't graduate from the academy. I got kicked out in my second year because you weren't allowed to work as a professional actor while you were going to school. And I booked a TV commercial, but I didn't think anybody would know. Wow. Well, the commercial hit really, really big. I got nominated for a Clio. I got signed to the biggest agency in New York City, and it ran for five years. And at 19 years old, I bought a house. Wow. So it, it's kind of a, a crazy thing. And the agent that got me the job was an agent who told me I would never work in the business because I sounded like a dummy from New Jersey. Oh, my gosh. Wow, did you prove him wrong? Crazy stories. Oh, my God. That's amazing. That's amazing. So that was your first professional gig. No, I had been in the Screen Actors Guild because around 14, 15, I booked a couple of TV commercials. So I knew how to go. Oh. The one that I'm talking about, I wasn't even supposed to go. I crashed the audition because I knew a friend of mine was going. I booked a job. The agent called me and said, who are you? And I says, uh, do you care? And it turned out to be one of the biggest campaigns of all time. Wow. Well, you were crazy. You and then I went... Hundreds, hundreds of commercials, and you actually did a couple of soap operas. You were in One Life to Live, and you were in As the World Turns, and you you were also later on a regular sketch player on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, and you you were in other shows. You were in Frasier. You were in Party of Five. You've done a lot of stuff. Yeah, well, I'm pretty lucky. Show business can be a... Uh... <laughs> A tough road. I, I some know. Some days you're working, some days you ain't worth shit. Some days you're wondering what you're doing. Right. You got to give up a lot of life to stay in the business. Um, yeah. I did what they would call under fives on a lot of different soaps at the heyday of my commercial career. So what would happen was I was uh, you you could be doing three to five lines on Ryan's Hope, One Life to Live. Um, whatever the soaps were back in the day. Yeah. But I went on as the world turns first is on the five. Then I went on as a day player, then a recurring character. And then I was just about to have a contract and they had a storyline with me and this guy and this girl. And we used to start fights with Marissa Tomei. She was the star of the show at that time. Yeah. I think she was like 19. I was probably 23. Yeah. I actually have footage of us. That's arguing. That's cool. Well, Meg Ryan was a police officer on the show, but she was in different vignettes. So you never really meet them. Right. They're in different scenes. Yeah. But I booked a job doing a commercial that went to Italy and it was going for three weeks. So I said bye to As the World Turns and I went to Italy. Wow. But you never know if you're going to be on the show longer anyway. So you can't really run that risk. Right. And TV commercials in the 80s and the 90s, you'd make a lot of money. So I said, no way. Bye bye. Yeah, today, today it's today it's all buyout. I did a uh, hotels.com commercial and it's today's all buyouts. It's just a buyout. Yeah. So just one one. That's it. One fee. And there you go. You're done. Yeah. Back in the day, you would get residuals through the Screen Actors Guild that paid your health insurance and you were kicking some serious ass. Yeah. My but friend um, there was a. My friend David actually did very famous for the uh, Great Adventure commercial where he's sitting at the table eating breakfast. The next thing you know, the chair moves and he's on some kind of like famous roller coaster that they had. I mean, you're talking like in the 80s or something and it was crazy. I can't really say I remember those commercials, but I do remember Great Adventure. And before Great Adventure became Six Flags, the commercials were done by a very famous comedian, Oh, what was his name? Oh, my God. He was the one. Um, Jerry Lewis. Jerry yes. Lewis. Yes. Isn't that something? Yeah. Jerry Lewis telethon. Jerry Lewis commercials. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So do you do you um, you stayed in New Jersey? Did you ever live in New York while you were working or did you just go from Jersey to L.A.? Uh, all my career in the beginning from the age of 16 to maybe 28 was New York City because I lived 20 minutes, 30 minutes outside the city. Right. And when I was going to the academy, I just took a bus. Right, right. I never really wanted to live in the city. 
And then when I moved to California, I didn't have anything to do with New York anymore. And my life became Hollywood. Right. And at the age of 28, at uh, 29, that's when I started doing stand up. I didn't think I'd ever become a comedian. Right. How did that? I, that's, you know, I, I just want to talk about just acting for a little bit before we get into the comedy because it, it, it blows my mind. Normally, it's the opposite. People start up as comics and then go into acting. And with you, it was the opposite. But you actually, I just want to touch upon a few things that you've done. I think you were in Stephen King's Lucky Quarter. Is that right? Yeah. And then in 2016, you played a detective in Criticized. Criticized, yes. Criticized, which I actually, I, I wanna, I'm going to try to find it and watch it. I couldn't, I, I was trying to find it this afternoon, but I'm, I'm going to try to find it and watch it. But you play a detective, which yeah. is a serious role. And, and you were, from what I saw from the clip, you were very, 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 very convincing. Like I could swear you've arrested people in one, you know, in a prior life or something, you know. <laughs> I've played a cop many times, many times, a lot of different films, a lot of different projects. Right. But Criticized actually is a really good movie. Even if I wasn't in it, it's a thriller. Uh, everybody's uh, really on point. Yeah, I liked what and I saw. Yeah. It's scary. <laughs> yeah, I'm de definitely going to watch it. I'm going to when I watch when I find it, I'm going to tell you about it. And then you are playing, let's get to what you what you've been doing recently. Um, but you're playing Little Leo in Silent Partners, which is with Ciro DiPaggio, who I had on the show a few weeks ago. And um, he was a guest. And uh, that's also, uh, I think, jo Joseph D'Onofrio is in it as well. And um, from what I saw, again, loved it. Loved the, the theme of it and, um, uh, you know, who's in it and acting. And it's funny because you see, I didn't know you were in it. And I'm like, oh, there's Mike. And I'm like, oh, there's Joe. And I was like... I get a kick out of seeing people that I know or met that's in it. And I feel so happy. I literally feel so happy for you and for Joe. And, you know, and, you know, when I see Peter and something who's a mutual friend, I mean, I just, I feel so happy and thrilled, you know, and I want to know about little Leo. Tell me about little Leo, because, uh, you know, from what I saw and heard, uh, you like little wise ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I got the role because I was in Miami on a comedy tour and a friend of mine was getting ready to do Silent Partners. His name is Gary Pastore. Yes, Gary. And Gary's been in a lot of movies, a lot of TV shows. Uh -huh. and we're friends. He had been on my podcast and we were talking about his career because right. he was playing uh, in the in the HBO series. And shit, it's going to escape my mind now. But he was in the HBO series, The Deuces. Yes, The Deuces. And uh, he had a great role. So he said he was going to Miami because he got a part in a TV pilot called Silent Partners. And there was a role for an underboss. Right. Little Leo. And I forgot what the last name of my own character was. But uh, I says, OK. And he goes, yeah, we just need a guy to be a little bit of a wise ass with a little funny undertone. Yeah, it was it'll be the type of carry you don't screw around with. So I'll do it. Yeah, it was great. It was great. And then you were doing, um, tell me about pizza. You play Anthony in Pizza and Wine, and it's W-H-I-N-E, not the wine you drink. Tell me about that. You know, in fact, I just uh, got a, a letter from the people who produced pizza with wine and they changed the title to four cousins and a Christmas. Okay. So it got a deal when I, I don't know if it's coming out for this Christmas or the following Christmas on the Hallmark channel. Awesome. Uh, but that it was a movie that I, uh, I was lucky to get in. You know, I got again, spotted doing stand up comedy and I got the acting role. Now the producer, uh, Maria Cap. She wrote and produced this project and she cast Robert Davi, Terry Polo, Nick Totoro, myself, and um, even Adam Sandler's nephews in it. Wow. So it's a nice piece. It got picked up and I think they're going to make a sequel. If they make the sequel, I'll have a bigger role. And that lady wants to do a TV series with me nice. that I wrote. 
And I think I'm going to call it uh, Growing Up on Grand Street, which nice. is about my life in this little town. That's awesome. Grand Street. I'm writing it down. That's great. All right, I so hope. Mike, we're going to take a really, really quick break. Don't go away. When we come back, we're going to talk about a little bit more about movies, and then we're going to get back into comedy. So hello to everyone watching, enjoying the show, and uh, stay right there. We'll be right back with Mike Marino. Fortunato's Pizza and Restaurant is located at 719 Hawkins Avenue in Ronkonkoma. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. You can find them on Facebook and Instagram. They do free deliveries to Ronkonkoma, Lake Ronkonkoma, Lake Grove, Center Reach, Nesconsin, Holbrook, and Selden. And they do catering for all occasions. A, remember, mention tea time and get 10% off your entire order. So, Fortunato's Pizza. Move your pizza to Fortunato's Pizza. So, where do you want to go tonight? Are you bored? Oh, oh my god! <laughs> Hold on tight. We're going to coast this. Coaster's Tavern is located at 487 Newbridge Road in East Meadow. Their number is 516-557-2222. Well, hi there, Teresa. It's John York from General Hospital. I am just checking in because apparently you have a great talk show called Tea Time on Strong Island TV. I want you to have continued great success and have a lot of fun. It sounds like you're having a lot of fun. And that's pretty much the key to everything, isn't it? So continued success. I'm proud of you. Have a great day, Teresa. Bye. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Tea Time. I want to thank John York from General Hospital for those beautiful words about me and my show. Um, I did have on um, Carolyn Hennessy, one of his um, um, General Hospital castmates. So I'm hoping to get John on one of these days. And I want to thank my sponsor, Fortunato's Pizza out in Ronkonkoma. Mention Tea Time, you get 10% off your order. And I love their tagline, move your pizza to Fortunato's Pizza. And um, listen, I, I want to thank whoever voted for me. Someone voted for my show, Best of Long Island, Beth Page. And um, voting ends tomorrow. So if you could all go Google Best of Long Island, Beth Page, click on Arts and Entertainment, then click on Podcast and click on Tea Time. Vote for me. I think it's great that someone took the time out to vote and nominate me, but now I need the votes to win and um uh, you know, it would be exciting if I did, but I'm just excited that someone took the time out to nominate two times. So listen, I'm here with Mike Marino. He's an actor, he's a stand-up comedian, and we've been talking about movies and his career and what he's done. And um, we were just talking about pizza and wine, which is now going to be called um, Four Cousins and a Christmas, and it's going to be coming out through Hallmark maybe next year. So we're all going to keep an eye open for that. And I want to know about... Gold 57, you play Phil Green. What can you tell me about that? Well, Gold 57 hasn't been shot yet. That's what might happen. Okay, all right. So we'll see about that one. <laughs> all right, well, that's good to know. Well, like I was supposed to film in March one of the shorts that I'm in, and well, it's, it's an indie. It's an indie film. And um, because of COVID, as you know, I mean, everything came to a complete halt. Yes. And now I play a school teacher and it's being filmed like a documentary. So um, we, we can't get into a school. It just can't happen. So I said, why don't we do it in front of a school? So I think that's what we're going to try to do <laughs> next. Um, so let's talk about you getting into stand up. I think you're hysterical. Um, there aren't too many people I laugh out loud when I see, but I did laugh out loud with you. And I think that... Um, me being 100% Sicilian and a lot of my material that I do is about being Italian and growing up Italian and food and, you know, and being loud and how we are, um, you know, it's so relatable. And for people who aren't Italian, you make it relatable, which is great. <laughs> so I want to know what made you say, 
I want to do stand up comedy while you were out in California. Because all my life, everybody would say that I had a flair for funny and I was always making people laugh and I always pulled pranks on people. If somebody opened the door, there might be an explosion. You never know what Mike's going to do. But I wanted so badly to be a theatrical actor. I wanted to be Robert De Niro. But when I was in Hollywood, a friend of mine said to me, why don't you go to the comedy store? You're really, really funny. See if you can't get on the stage. Right. I'm like, well, what am I going to do? You could crack a couple of jokes. So before I went out to California, there was an open mic somewhere. They were having a comedy competition. Mm-hmm. And I went with a bunch of friends at this bar and I said, let me go on stage. I'm going to talk about my mother. OK. And I said, my mom, my mom, my mom. And that is and the that. And everybody started laughing and they gave me the 50 bucks. What? I met a talent coordinator who I talked to every day since then, 30 years ago. And uh, that's it. I started doing stand up. But it's a grind. You got to go out every night. You got to learn the ropes. And I yep. became a regular at the comedy store in Los Angeles. And that's where I cut my teeth. Right. And I would share the stage with anybody from Andrew Dice Clay to Eddie Griffin, to some of the biggest names in the business, to people who were no names at all, who are big names now. Right. And then you become addicted. Then you become uh, a bigger, bigger name. And you start selling out clubs. Then you start selling out theaters. Then you're on television. And almost every time I got a role as an actor, someone saw me doing stand-up. I got in the movie Pizza with Bullets. They saw me at the Laugh Factory. I got on Party of Five. They saw me at the Laugh Factory. I got on Becker. I got on The Tonight Show by auditioning to do stand-up on The Tonight Show. And the guy said, well, I'm not the stand-up producer, but I'm the sketch producer. So why don't you come down and do a sketch and let's see if we can't get you on that way. Right. Ten years of doing sketch comedy. I never did stand up on The Tonight Show. Wow. I did stand up on other shows. It's just really crazy. And what do you, do you have a preference of one over the other, acting or stand up? Because they're two totally different, you know. Yeah, they are. Because in the acting world, if you're making a movie or even a TV show, you have the word cut. You don't in stand up. No. Do or die. Lying by the seat of your pants. Do or die. Now, if you can get to the level where there's 15, 1,600 people, 10,000 people watching you perform, you're high. You're just so high. You're so happy. You don't ever want to come down. I know. So I would probably say live performing is so much better than being in a movie or being on a TV show. Right. Because it's that, it's that, um, instant gratification that you get from the audience, you know? Um, Plus you get to meet the fans, you get to do what you want to do, you make stuff up, you got old material, new material, uh, but, you know, man, I wouldn't mind being on a TV show and then touring. Right. And that's why you hope something like Silent Partners gets on television, because if I went to a big theater and they said, now from the TV series Silent Partners, here's Mike Marino, and then they see me do stand-up comedy, I'm gold. Right, right, exactly, yeah. I just, um, I, growing up, like I said, I wanted to go to high school performing arts. My parent, my very strict Sicilian parents wouldn't allow that. But I, but I uh, always wanted to be either on SNL or, or have my own sitcom. That was the whole thing. Back in the 90s, I started doing comedy back in the 90s. Back then, my last name was Manzo. It was Teresa Manzo. It was my first husband. Anyway, um, and I did it for a few years, and I got to, like, work with really great people as well. And then I stopped to have a family. I had my daughter. I stopped, and then I returned to comedy thanks to Bob Nelson, I'm going to say, oh, five, almost five years ago. And um, But, again, like you, my heart and passion is always been in acting, always being in the school plays and community theater and just, you know, just always, always doing something in that, you know, in that, in that vein. Um, But I think that, you know, like, like we were saying, I I was saying a lot of people start out in comedy and go to acting where you did the opposite. You did acting and then went into comedy. Um, And like you said, there's nothing like that high (laughs) of hearing that audience when you're, when you're on that stage performing, there's nothing like it in the world. Nothing. 
The Laugh Factory in California and the Comedy Store are probably the two most famous comedy performance places in the world. Yeah. Comedians come from around the world to get on that stage. Yeah. Yeah. To be a regular is an honor. Absolutely. To perform there on a Friday or Saturday night Weekend, yeah. at nine yeah. o'clock with your name on the marquee That's prime. is like winning the lottery. It is. So in the last few years, maybe 10 years, 10 years, really, my name was on the marquee every weekend that I was in town. Yeah. I could comp who I want. I could do what I want. I go next door and eat and drink with everybody. Right. It's the greatest, greatest high. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to bring your A game because you could be on stage and people don't know your name. And the next guy would be Chris Rock. Yeah. And it's the place to be. I only hope the pandemic ends and I can go back to Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. That club has been closed. Yeah, I there there are no comedy clubs open. I think in are there anything are there anything open in Jersey? Because I know a lot of comics are traveling to either Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania. There's nothing open here in New York. There's a few places that were open with social distancing. I've done a few. It sucks performing for a hundred people in an arena that seats six hundred. Yeah, but. Something's better than nothing. Yeah, no, you're right. And people are afraid. Yeah, I mean, look, I, my brother had it, and I'm glad he's okay. Um, two of my friends are battling it now, um, and I reached out to them, and they're feeling a little better. It's scary, Mike. It's scary. I had it. Yes, you did, and I want—I didn't want to mention that unless you wanted to, but yes, you did, and... Um, and I had talked to you right before you were going somewhere. And then I know when you came back, you didn't feel well. And, um, you know, it's not a fun thing to get because it's kind of like a crapshoot. You know what I mean? It's like, you don't know what's going to happen. Everyone has different symptoms. I know three comics who got it. All three of them had different symptoms. Even till today, it took my brother 63 days to finally test negative to return to work and he still doesn't have like a hundred percent of his smell or taste back. Yeah, well, when my taste first went, I just thought I was a really bad cook. <laughs> but then I kept eating peanut butter every day because peanut butter would ignite very quickly taste wise. Yeah. And I didn't taste the peanut butter. And then I had this incredible cough and I was just like, wow, wow. And then one day, hello, 911, come and get me. So you did go to the hospital and they sent you home? I went to the hospital. About two hours, they ran a bunch of tests and said, go home. You'll be all right. And then they called me the next day and said, you had COVID. We're going to send you a Z pack. Okay. Take some over the counter drugs. Yeah. And then I fought it like as if I was fighting a really bad cold. Yeah. Did you, did you have fever at all? No. You didn't have fever. 101 when I went in the hospital, but after that, no. Now I really don't think about it anymore. Right. So I guess I'm 100%. Good. No, I'm happy, to, I'm, happy, I'm happy to hear it. You know, I'm glad that, you know, you survived it and you're, you're fine, which is, you know, a blessing, seriously. Yeah. Um, you know, because it's scary. It's very scary. You know, you don't know. You just don't know what's going to come out of it. But as far as you're doing um, stand-up, I want to just say hi real quick to Bruno Coppola's watching and uh, and DB Frick. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Um, you know what we're going to do, Mike? I want to take another really, really one-minute quick break. And when we come back, we're going to continue talking about your stand-up, okay? So don't go away, everybody. We'll be right back with Mike Marino. So where do you want to go tonight? Why don't we go to Coasters? Oh, cool! I heard it's a great place. Let's check it out. Yeah, definitely. All right. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> Coasters Tavern is located at. 
5487 New Bridge Road in East Meadow. The number is 516-557-2222. Fortunato's Pizza and Restaurant is located at 719 Hawkins Avenue in Ronkonkoma. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. You can find them on Facebook and Instagram. They do free deliveries to Ronkonkoma, Lake Ronkonkoma, Lake Grove, Center Reach, Nesconsent, Holbrook, and Selden, and they do catering for all occasions. A, remember, mention tea time and get 10% off your entire order. So, Fortunato's Pizza. Move your pizza to Fortunato's a Pizza. How you doing? It's Sal, the voice of Valentinetti. Why are you watching me? You should be watching Teresa Canis Tracy. Tea time with Teresa Canis Tracy Farrell. And make sure you, you, you follow Teresa on Facebook. Tea time with Teresa Canis Tracy Farrell. We'll see you there. I love the way you say my name. I love it. Hey everybody, welcome back to Tea Time. I'm so glad you're joining me tonight. I have actor and comedian Mike Marino's in the house. I want to thank um, uh, Sal the Voice Valentinetti for that shout out for Tea Time. Mike, you said you work with Sal a lot? Sal Valentinetti and I had done many shows together and then we were hanging out in Hollywood and uh, we would go, I brought him with me over to the Laugh Factory yeah. In fact, we did some skits at the Laugh Factory. Now that I think about it, me and Sal, they had a game funny. show. Very we had a game funny. show. He's very funny. And then uh, Sal and I went to Vibrato to hang out with Robert Davi and nice. Nick Fellalonga, all these big shots. You know, when I talk about this stuff, I really feel like, oh, what the hell happened? We were kicking ass. I know. I know. Damn it. It took years to get to that level. I know. It's crazy. So thank you to Sal because he's a Thanks, smart. Sal. Sal was in Bat Boy, A Yankee Miracle with me. Um, <laughs> and uh, that was a lot of fun. We had a great time. And I want to thank my sponsor, Fortunato's Pizzeria and Restaurant out in Ronkonkoma. Move you pizza to Fortunato's a pizza. Mention tea time. Get 10% off your order. How cool is that? So listen, we're back with Mike Marino. Um, Mike and I, we met a couple of years ago at McGuire's. Um, and I think... You're great. I really do. I, I, I enjoy watching you and, and, and even, like I said, what I saw in Silent Partners and everything else. But getting back to comedy in 20, 20, 2008, 2008, you were inducted into the New Jersey Comedy Hall of Fame. How exciting is that? Well, you really do your homework. Holy oh, shit. I do. <laughs> that trophy right there. <laughs> I love it. Love it. <laughs> But how, how, I mean, come on, how honored and amazing is that? Yeah. I don't know how many more comedians since then are in there, but I think the year prior to me was Lou Costello, Italian yeah. comedian from New Jersey. Yeah, I was going to, Lou was from Patterson, right? Yeah, and then I think they had uh, Jerry Lewis. Okay. And then me. Wow. Wow. I mean, that, that's that's amazing. I don't know who's in there now. That's crazy. But the, fu the thing is, is I had an album with the producers of that. Uh, Jersey Born and Raised was my first album. Nice. And it was with the company that did that particular event. And I got a couple more. And uh, obviously, I stick them on a wall. <laughs> What year did you do that, Jersey, Born and Raised? What year was your first CD? Shit, I don't even remember. <laughs> I couldn't find that information. <laughs> um, my first album really was Get the Bat. Get the Bat. Then I did Jersey, Born and Raised, and the one that hit the hardest was Live from the Paramount Theater in Asbury Park. I love that. That's the movie. one that aired on a bunch of television shows, a bunch of networks, and Get the bat. In my house, it was get the, the wooden spoon. That's what it was in my house. Yeah, well, there's a few spoons still in this house. <laughs> you know what my, mother, my mother used to use? Every Christmas, every Christmas, we used to get the paddle with the ball. Remember the paddle with the ball? Kadima. And she'd rip off the ball and use the paddle. And one time she hit me so hard on my ass, it split down the middle. <laughs> we call that game Kadima when you hit the ball, hit the ball, hit the ball. Yeah, 
And yeah, she'd pull it off, and that little paddle boy on the back of a kid's ass, you were screaming. Let me tell you something. Back then, it was made with real wood, and it was thick. Yeah. All right? And the slap would leave a mark on your ass. That's what they need to bring back. Yeah, you're right. Your and kids. In, in 2015, you won. This is another one that I jaw dropper. I mean, seriously, 2015, you won the USO Bob Hope Comedy Award for performing for our military. <clears throat> and, you know, that is another thing that I, I love people who give back. I give back myself and I don't announce what I do. Some people see what I do. Some people don't. But God bless you for performing for our military. That is beautiful. Oh, I love it. This is the Oscars for stand-up comedians. It is. The Bob Hope, it says, looks like Bob Hope. Yeah. Of course, Bob Hope was famous for doing all the USO tours around the world. Back in the day, him and all of the, the women and stuff like that. Who am I thinking of that was always in the shows with him? Um, Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields. Yeah. Oh, many. But uh, they never really mentioned comedians on television for all the stuff that we did around the world. So the Laugh Factory got together and honored about maybe 20 to 30 comedians. And uh, this is the USO Comedy Award, and it's shaped like Bob Pope. So instead of calling it Oscar, we called it Bobby. <laughs> I, like, I like the, uh, got the, the Bobby. Side, <laughs> his side profile. <laughs> Great. The Bobby. That, that, um, how many, how many did you do? Do you remember? Hundreds. Wow. One of the most memorable ones, of course, we did Japan and, uh, you, um, Kosovo, the, where the cold war was. I can't think of everything off the top of my head, but Afghanistan, Baghdad, Kuwait, uh, hot zones, gunfire, crazy shit. That's where I came up with the joke about whacking Osama bin Laden. And I did that joke on Byron Allen. That joke hit 14 million people. Well, you in, tw what was it? In 20, in 2016, I think you came up with make America Italian again, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, of course that was a play on make America great again. So we were saying make America Italian again. And since I was touring, and I have a great team of producers and directors who do stuff with me. We came up with making that a web series, which you can watch now on uh, on my YouTube channel. And it's really funny. And it, and, it, and it displays all my comedian friends. Right. And it's basically also when you perform at a stand up. So the concept is, is if we had an Italian president, yeah. how all our problems would go away. No questions asked. You didn't see nothing. You don't say nothing but it gets done anywhere from Vinny get the bat to, I don't know what happened. Uh, we were having a lot of fun with this particular thing. It was going and growing. Uh, now we're going to change it just a little bit and hopefully get ready to shoot the pilot, which is going to be the new episodes for 2024. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I've been running for president for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get in there. When you, when you were growing up, just to go back a little bit, who did you like to watch yourself act as a performer? Who did you say, oh, God, I, I, I want to see their new movie or I want to see them on TV? Who did you like to, to watch? Well, my stand-up comedy uh, gurus to watch would be Rodney Dangerfield. I always thought Rodney was the greatest. Yeah. And then uh, Andrew Dice Clay. Yeah. But when it comes to acting, I always thought, you know, Robert De Niro and Al Pacino. Right. Yeah, of course. Robert De Niro, Al Pacino and guys like that. Now, I never met any of those guys. Oh, actually, I was a big fan of Armand DeSante, who now is a fan of mine. Isn't that great? Yes. Well, he writes on, to me I once had, in a while. I had on uh, Paul Borghese. Yeah. Who directed Armand DeSante and Kathy Moriarty. Um, he directed them, um, in, in his movie, um, uh, once upon a time in, oh, geez, once upon a time in Brooklyn. Oh, once really? Upon a time in Brooklyn. If you didn't see it, see it. It was great. Yeah. Because I watched two movies that night and the other one was back in the day. And the other one was, uh, once upon a time, I think 
in Brooklyn. I think that's what it's called. I hope so. Um, but yeah, uh, Amand is great. He's great. He's also good friends with Raina Grown, who um, is in who uh, Fat Boy is based on his life story. So Amand is great. I love watching him too. He's he's an amazing actor. Well, believe it or not, when I was 19, Armand Asante came to the American Academy to give, uh, I guess, a speech. And he was in the class with the teacher, who was Joseph Rose. And I remember Armand Asante saying, if you want to pursue your career as an actor, get a survival job and make sure you have a suit of armor because you're going to war. Wow. Well, that's putting it bluntly. You know what yeah. I mean? And all these years later, he doesn't even know this, but his cousin Marco is in my web series. Oh. Marco and I are very good friends. He's a fellow comedian from Long Island. Okay. And uh, Marco's in the series. And Marco got Armand to give me a testimonial along with some other celebrities in a video. Nice. And uh, now he writes to me and I got a text from him once. And he said, you're, your web series about running for president has to be the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it's genius. It really is. But we make no sense. And that's why I tell people, look, you're not going to get offended by watching this. Nothing makes any sense. It's supposed to be stupid. Right. So there's a scene where we're looking for uh, Osama bin Laden in the desert and you see the Luxor in the background. It's a joke. We're in Vegas. I mean, how could you not laugh? Yeah, and then I'm yeah. screaming on the phone, I want him dead. I'm going to kill him. Mom, please, mom. No, I'm not hungry. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just silly. Um, I want to I wanna just talk about um, what you were doing before COVID hit. I know you mentioned how that one um, goal 57 was something that hopefully is going to happen. But is there anything that you were in the middle of filming that had to stop and you had to go back to at all? No, in January and February, I was touring and I have deal with uh, Royal Caribbean cruise ships. So I was going to do a ship every month. Oh, that's which right. It's a guarantee of work. And I loved it so much. I want to go back so badly. Yes. I was going to be performing at the Lab Factory continually. Yeah. And my whole year was booked. I was booked in a theater once a month. For 12 months, this is the first time anything like this has ever happened where everything got canceled. I know. Sure, it got pushed, pushed, canceled, canceled, yeah. canceled. And some of them we did, but instead of 1,500 seats, it's 100. Instead of 500 seats, it's 50 seats. You can't sell out. You can't sell anything out. Uh, the last show I did was March 9th, and it was at Dangerfields. That was my last show. And then everything that I had lined up canceled. Yeah. And I had Bobby Collins on my show a few months ago, and he's been doing this, as you know, forever. And he's like, I'm home for the first time for more than a week. And I got a wife and two kids. <laughs> it's like, you know. I, I, I'm a single guy. I've never been married. I have no children. And I was happy that I was touring, 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 because although I love my home here in New Jersey, right? Uh, this is a four bedroom, two bathroom, beautiful home, completely remodeled. I'm so damn lonely. I'm ready to jump off a building. <laughs> I can't go near people because they might get sick. I might get sick. They might have got sick. Who knows who's going to get sick? Yeah. And, you know, what are you supposed to do? How much I, marijuana can I smoke? I know. It's just, it's, it's a waiting game. And you know what it is, is we knew that the entertainment industry was going to be the last one to return, you know, back. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. It's just, I was getting very upset. We had a couple of rallies at Governors because we felt that, listen, if you can go to a German fested hot box called a gym and work out, why can't you do comedy outdoors in the summer? There was no, there was no reason why you can't do comedy outside. You know what I'm saying? Where you're still socially distancing and it's safe. And then you can go, you know, bowling and stick your hands, you know, your fingers in those three holes, 
but you can't do comedy outside. And at the time, it was nice out. Now the weather's getting, you know, cold and crappy, and it makes it harder on anyone to do anything outside, unless you're living in California or a, or a state where, you know, you know, and remember back in the day, they used to have like rave parties, and they used to keep it really quiet where these big parties were going to be. Well, today we're having underground comedy shows. You know, you can't announce where you're doing it. It's all, you know, on the down low, where you're going to be, right? I was somewhere a couple of weeks ago for my girlfriend's 40th, and we're doing comedy, but you got to keep it quiet. It's like insane. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, people are doing Zoom shows. How do you feel about that? I've done a few. It's not, it sucks. I know. It's not the same. sucks. How much more fun would it be if you and I were in the same room right now doing this interview? I know. I know. Talking about talking about my show. Let's talk about your show from my mother's basement. <laughs> well, live that. from my mother's basement. Was live, live from my mother's basement because um, you do a show. Tell me about the show. I watch it. But tell everyone who's watching about live from your mother's basement. Live from my mother's basement created about, uh, we did it about two years ago. Yeah. And now I do it steadily every Tuesday night at eight o'clock here on the East Coast. Okay. I do it on my Facebook live feed and my Instagram feed. And then it goes to um, you, my YouTube channel, which is Mike Marino Live. All my social media is Mike Marino Live. Yes. So when it goes on all those channels, people get to look and watch. And then, of course, Spotify and uh, iTunes for people to listen to. Right. But when I was doing it on the cruise ships, I was like a tour guide and I got to do it from Cuba, uh, the Bahamas, wow. Jamaica. And I was showing people what it looks like where I go. I did it from Alaska. That's cool. Now that I'm in COVID, so I do it from the bar downstairs, which is a full blown bar. It's set up. It's kind of cool. Looks like it's set up from the 1940s. Yeah, I like it. And but I have the easy. Yeah, that's I what like I do. That's what that's what you do because we're all trying to stay relevant during these crazy times. Speaking about crazy times, we're going to take one last commercial break. We'll be back in a minute. Don't go away. More with Mike Marino. Fortunato's Pizza and Restaurant is located at 719 Hawkins Avenue in Ronkonkoma. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. You can find them on Facebook and Instagram. They do free deliveries to Ronkonkoma, Lake Ronkonkoma, Lake Grove, Center Reach, Nesconsent, Holbrook, and Selden. And they do catering for all occasions. A, remember, mention tea time and get 10% off your entire order. So, Fortunato's Pizza. Move your pizza to Fortunato's a Pizza. So, where do you want to go tonight? Are you bored? Oh, oh my God! <laughs> Hold on tight. We're going to coast us. Coaster's Tavern is located at 487 Newbridge Road in East Meadow. Their number is 516-557-2222. Hey everybody, welcome back to Tea Time. I'm so glad you're joining me tonight. I just want to thank... Uh Fortunatos for being my sponsor. Um, they're in Ronkonkoma and they deliver to a bunch of places out there in Suffolk. So mention tea time, get 10% off your order. Move your pizza to Fortunatos of Pizza. I love saying that. And I want to thank Coasters. Coasters Tavern has been a sponsor of mine since I started this crazy show two years ago. And uh, I just want to thank them just for, you know, always supporting me and being there for me. So I'm back. I'm with Mike Marino. He's a comedian. He's an actor. He's got a fantastic resume. He's won awards. This man has done it all. Is there anything that you haven't done that you want to do? Yes. I want to have my own TV series. Yes, I hear you. I feel you. A TV series or a TV sitcom? Does it matter? 
Well, I like shows like Modern Family, where they're not filmed in front of a live audience. Yes. I like uh, Schitt's Creek, that type of show. So that's yeah. the type of show that I would like to do. And I want to show this town where I live. The town people are funny. Um, you know, I like to have kids, adults, guys, girls, all kinds of great stuff. Yeah. Old school type, great, funny writing where there's a joke every two seconds. <laughs> That's 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 my ultimate goal. But I want to keep on working in movies. I want to keep on doing television. And I don't ever want to stop touring as a comedian. Yeah. One of the only businesses in the world where you can tour until the day you die. Don Rickles did it. That's I right. want to do it. Yeah. I mean, you you have people people out there. I know uh, Rich Little, who's an amazing imp- 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 uh, impressionist. Um, he had he was he was in Vegas. Doing a show in Vegas. And he then, still like, does. Yeah, well, he well because of COVID, it's not. But the man is still working. I mean, he's in, is, in his 80s, still kicking ass. So, yeah, I mean, there's no reason why you can't keep doing what you're doing. Um, Rich Little's performing now, I think, four nights a week at the Tropicana, which is the Laugh Factory. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Just amazing, right? Amazing. God bless the guy. The oh, original. I know. I know. I I. He, uh, Marilyn Michaels is supposed to be coming on my show after the new year. And Marilyn Michaels, as you know, worked a lot with Rich. Holy she, smokes, Marilyn Michaels. Marilyn Michaels, and she's amazing. She Remember, she used to do Cher and Joan Rivers. And, yes. Oh, my God, Lily Tomlin. I mean, she, she's amazing. So she's got a new CD coming out. Um, and, uh, and hopefully she'll be on. I have some really great guests coming on and. 2021 I'm, I'm you know I have a lot of people on the show that in a way COVID was a blessing for me because I was able to get people to come on the show who I normally would not get I mean to get yeah. Donnie, Donnie Most from Happy Days and Butch Patrick from the Munsters that would have never happened if these people were working <laughs> you know so it's kind of like a blessing in disguise for me. I mean, obviously, I want to get back to work. I want to act. I want to do stand up. That's where my love and passion is too. So you know, I I feel your 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 pain and I feel your anxiety. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, we're all trying to stay relevant right now and try to you know have something going on. And as far as you going on, everyone can see you every Tuesday night, right, from your mother's basement. And that's at 8 o'clock, you said? Every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock on Facebook Live, Mike Marino Live. Mike Marino Live. So I want everyone to follow Mike. He's uh, Mike Marino Live everywhere. Instagram, YouTube. Just watch him um, and, and and watch his videos. I did post, uh, make a, a video um, about, you know, make, um, you know, about if we had an Italian president, which I think was, like I said, genius. You do this thing on G.I. Joe. And one of my favorites, favorites that you do is being Italian, having an Italian family on the family feud, because growing up, all I kept saying was, I want the five of us to be on the family feud. I want the five of us to be on the family feud. And then I watched it. I'm like laughing, going, that's exactly how it would go. So (laughs) it would be pretty funny. Name a round fruit. Fenoik. Fenoik. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. well, we don't eat fennel <laughs> <laughs> you're right I don't, Come on. <laughs> I don't call it anise either so you know oh my god all right listen mike i i want to thank you really from the bottom of my heart to take this time out and to join me and and my viewers um you're a sweetheart and uh i hope maybe one day we get to work together because even though i don't look italian like you because like i said we pass for everything right, right, but because of the blue eyes and the light hair. <laughs> Whatever it is, I'm ready to play that role. Let's get going. Yeah, let's get going. I want to thank you. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Please like the show. Please share it. Mike, stay right there for a minute. And everyone, stay safe, wear a mask, wash your hands, and I'll see you next week. Ciao, everybody. Oh.